welcome back to the Alpha Nerd Podcast. I am your host, Kyle, along with Andrew for our gaming section. Hello. How's it going, Andrew? Pretty good. It's, it's been all right. It's been busy, but we're good. Yeah, it's been busy. So, I'm going to throw you a surprise real quick. That's why I didn't talk to you about it before the show. Yeah, that would be the definition of a surprise. surprise. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, not giving you a heads up or giving you an idea. Yeah. Still Make defining you think what a surprise, surprise is. is. Yes. Yes. Are. So, one of the things I thought about doing oh, no. is for the month of July. Uh-oh. Instead of spinning the wheel every week, every two weeks. Um, do you like Fallout? Yeah, I like Fallout. Uh, which one? One, two, Tactics, Brotherhood of Steel, which no one ever talks about. No. Three. No. Four. Three, four. And the upcoming five that just got announced. Yeah, I know. Right? I'm excited for that. I mean, um, it's Fallout 5. It's going to be a game. Yes, it's going to be a game. Fallout 76? Ugh. So, all right. I got to go into this, but they fixed Fallout 76. Okay? It's yeah. Good. Yes, but... I know your philosophy. It, if it sucks on release, it sucks eternally. But it is fixed now. Not sucks eternally. It just, at that point, is no relevance to me because, like I said... That's fair. Um, so, what? I was thinking for the month of July, Uh-oh. we do a random generator Uh-oh. Fallout 4 playthrough. Or Fallout 3 or whichever one you have. There's a random generator. So, there's random generators that tell you what your skill tree is going to be. And oh, or alignment okay. and stuff. All right, all right. So, okay, it's a random. I, I own all of them. Sorry, I can, I can so that them. makes it easy. Um, I guess at this point, we got to pick which I have three with all the DLC. I have four with all the DLC. And I, well, no, maybe not all the DLC. I have four. I have to recheck. And I have New Vegas with all the DLC. Oh, New Vegas. It's so well do do so you want, Do you want to do New Vegas? I mean, I own all of them. Actually, I think Fallout 3 is the only one I... No, I have, a, I have a copy of Fallout 3 Game of the Year, so I do have all the DLC for that. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think which ones I'd want to do. I I played a lot of them back in the day. I mean, so did I. I played through them uh, many times. Have you ever played Fallout 1 or 2? No, I have not. I've never had them. I don't own them. Okay, they're, they're, they're dirt cheap. But I, I actually, sorry. I tried out Fallout 1 or 2, one of the two, where they're like the top down. Like, one or two, one of the two. One of the two. One of the two. I said, shut up. One or the two. Yes. So I tried one of them out. I didn't like them as much as I like three Vegas. And yeah, you, you like the first person shooter. Yeah, it was, it amuses me. Um, Fallout, Fallout 2 is fantastic. Fallout 1 is, um, it, it is a game that led to Fallout 2. That's all I could say about <laughs> Fallout 1. A lot of people like Fallout 1 a lot. I, think it's drastically inferior to two two is spectacular though and the only thing in my opinion in the fall series that came close to two was new vegas which makes sense because most of the people that did two worked on new vegas yes um i think if we're gonna pick one of them to play through the easiest one to play through is fallout four hands down because it's the most available it's the most modern one it's the least buggy one fair enough um, does that sound like a interesting thing to yeah, do? Sure, I haven't played Fallout Four since it came out. So, did you play any of the DLCs? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, I have not. One of the DLCs is shockingly good for a Bethesda game. Yes, uh, I've Far heard. Harbor. Yes, Far Harbor. I don't know if they hired a new writer or what they did, but Fallout Four is kind of bad, <laughs> like storyline. Yeah, it was it's bad on a lot of fronts. It, it there's is. no moral system. It's not just that there's no moral system. There's no one who is trying to do anything good in that game. You could it, argue the railroad is not really. The 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 brother to steal are fascist, which is correct. That is Fallout canon. They are fascists. Yes. They're not supposed to be your buddy, and that was one of my big problems with Fallout Three, where they were like the heroes of the wasteland. Yeah. No, they're supposed to be monsters. Yeah, they're supposed to be. There's supposed to be, if you have an idea ideology that falls out, then you'd be like, yeah, they're the good guys, I guess. Their their idea is the preservation of technology. Yes. That, for for the betterment of humanity. Yeah, and most of that time that means if you have something shiny, you're going to die, and it's going to get taken by them. Yes. So so Fallout 4, I'm, a, I'm, I'm cool with doing a playthrough there. Please don't say it's 100% because I don't want to do anything. No, no. What we're going to be doing okay. mods. is, if you would like mods. Okay. Physics, physics mods got to be a thing. 
Uh, the the objective is this: we're gonna get a generator. Okay. We're gonna do our spins because it'll give us what abilities to take and all that stuff, and we'll go from there. There's not like one click that prints you out like do this character. And I think it, what what it'll do is you spin it, and then it'll be like, oh well, you're gonna take this much in gun, this much in talking, this much gives you random stats that you take your points that and is, perks. That's gonna be horrible. I know. It's gonna be just horrible. Yes. And I think at that point, we should also do random character generations. Yeah. Okay. Like, I'm, I do with that anyways, usually. with with Specifically with Bethesda games, because their character creators are generally awful. Although Starfield looks good. Yeah. So, and then what we'll do is, after we get everything set up, we'll... After we get our spins and stuff, we'll, we'll play start... the game. Yeah, we're going to play the game, okay. but we'll take a picture of our character okay. and our setups, okay. and then we'll... Talk about our progression through the month of July. The most important thing to remember, though, Kyle, is war, war never, never changes. changes. That's the most important thing to remember. And that means I'll have to erase my Morgan Slaveman. <laughs> that my not gonna ask. Nope, nope, not gonna ask. Yes, not, yes. not gonna ask. That was <laughs> not not. I going made to the ask. I made the evil version of Morgan Freeman. So I made mean, Morgan Slaveman. Oh, okay. And he okay. took all the most angry options possible. Okay. And he also took the Silver Shroud quests. I mean, the Silver, Silver Shroud quests were fun. Yeah, they were those fun. Were, those were a, that was a fun quest. So Bethesda games have better side quests than they ever do main story quests. No, there always. are just so many good little side so, quests. Like Fourth, Antagony and the Mechanist from 3. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fallout 4 had um had the... Oh, you... I was gonna say you you should you're you're probably not gonna be familiar with this, but I think Fallout Four actually had the little side quest that referenced uh, Pikmin's model, an HP Lovecraft story, uh, which I was like, oh, this is entertaining. Oh, up in wait, was it four? I think it was four. I I want to say it was where four. you go through uh, Salem and. Well, no, it was actually. I, it might have been in Salem. It might have been. It was somewhere around there. Because uh, remember, HP Lovecraft stories take place in. So, like, Massachusetts, Maine, so around there. Yeah, I, I remember something. There, There's a quest in one of the Fallout games, I swear it's four, where you go into, like, this abandoned house where this dude was modeling people, and it's it's an elaborate play on the short story Pikmin's model from H.P. Lovecraft, although it doesn't end quite the same, because those guys are super evil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, four, four has some interesting experiences. Um, I'm not I, when I say when I say Bethesda games, I am not referring to New Vegas. New Vegas was done by Obsidian, and New Vegas is a spectacular game that is a complete buggy pile of technical issues. Oh, I love it though! <laughs> it's so good. It uh, it is a well developed world. It is an interesting story. The DLCs are fantastic. The yeah. Crater DLC with the robots. Yes. So I I felt like that was a good thing to do just for the month of July. I'm, I'm glad for we, Independence Day and stuff because yeah. I was thinking, what's a game that has to really do with like Independence Day, yeah, yeah. like Fallout. patriotism and all that stuff? I was like, Fallout's perfect. Yeah, Fallout, Fallout is is an is a parody of American patriotism. So that is a very good. That is a correct. That is correct. It's not a parody. It's more of a satire. Yeah, satire. So I felt that would be good for the month of July. I mean, your other choice there is Call of Duty, which is just the most jingoistic game. Of yeah, no, they're boring. Whoa, they, they get bored. Whoa, America. Yeah, bro. America. Pound my Mountain Dew. America. So that also gave us some time away from the wheel, just for something a little different. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's go into the wheel. All right. So, um, A, I have not played Sonic yet, but a very good friend of mine is lending me an Xbox 360, and I am going to play Sonic. You graciously, yes. graciously dropped a disc off at my house in a threatening manner. It wasn't threatening. It was a very threatening, <laughs> very threatening manner where you were like, "Hey, Andrew, are you?" <laughs> yeah, so with my six-year-old, my attack six-year-old. Um, so I have that. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm getting a, I'm getting my hands on a 360 to play this game. I will tell you exactly what I think about it. Oh, it's gonna be a gem. Those words are not allowed on radio. I'm pretty sure. Trash fire. <laughs> there, no, so I, I'm not gonna say anything. Good. Else. So let's talk about Grand Theft Auto then. Well, actually, I want to ask, did you... So the game I gave you last night, what was it? It was Planescape Torment. Yes. And incidentally, I... You played it. I played it, but I don't remember hardly ever playing it. I remember I played it because I saw the one part of it, and I was like, I remember this. Okay. So I'm going to play it through. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. I'm going to... 
I was gonna now, say I hit I hit financial problems this week, so I didn't pick it up this week. That's fine. That, that's okay. There's no yeah. there's no rush on any of this. Um I went back to Thief. Oh uh, why did you go back to Thief? Because I told you I would complete it. You, you you know you're telling yourself that. I don't care. <laughs> like I, know I how care. Bad it is. Integrity of the show. Integrity of the show. Uh, you can you can say whatever you it, want. It's there. bad. It's yeah, rough. It's a bad game. It's rough. Why do you think it killed the entire intellectual property? Fair enough. It was just rough. Yeah, it it is terrible. still rough. I was gonna say if you had if you didn't want to do Planescape Torment, the other game I was gonna suggest, and I know you said you were leery about playing it, was Metal Gear Solid Five. Yes. Uh, one of the reasons I was gonna suggest that is a, it's like five dollars for the complete edition, and b, it's oh by the way, there's a Steam sale right now. It just started today. Steam Summer Sale today. Oh, okay, I'll have to check it out because yeah. um, everything's just on sale. Okay, I'll have to check it out. <clears throat> Uh, I might have to persuade you to gift me some stuff, and sure. for for reasons I'll explain later. Okay, he, he's gonna persuade me. <laughs> yeah, just hit you a bunch. <laughs> um, I was gonna suggest Metal Gear Solid Five because honestly, it is a good game, and you do need some playing it. I have personal problems with the storyline, but I also have personal so do problems I. with the Kojima storyline. I know the whole storyline. I've fortunately when it. I just didn't have time to play it. I didn't really want to play it. It's a good game. No, I hear it's a great game. Yeah. And from the gameplay, I see it's a great Plus, game. It never gets tired strapping the balloon to people you knock out, yeah. watching them just zoom away. Or and then they instantly become your followers. Like yeah. they, you take them to your brainwashing station and they instantly become your follower. What's complicated about this? And then you have Quiet, the best character in that game. God, that 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 character is so bad. So bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Kojima, he writes characters like that. It's still bad. It can still be bad. He is the best at writing mentally damaged women soldiers. <laughs> Tell me he's not. I, he's not. <laughs> I told you he's not. He, they're the... All right, all right. I want to go on record here. In Metal Gear Solid 4, there's the, there's the what, the Furies. Or the Beauty Beast. The Beauty and the Beast. The Beauty and the Beast. In so, the beast. Isn't there something you can do that makes them like do a photo shoot for you? Yes. I'm gonna point out that these in game, they talk about these women as being horrifically damaged by war. Like pretty explicit in the descriptions of what happened to these poor, poor women. And he puts a photo shoot with them in swimsuits. They're not in swimsuits, they're in their weird cat suit things. Okay. They're very sexualized cat suits in the game. Yes, that that is a line there. That's that's it, it, it. It is weird, but if you notice every game he's ever made, that's they're all that way. That doesn't make it better. I never said it was. I'm just saying he's the best at writing damaged female soldiers. He's best at writing caricatures of damaged female soldiers. Yes. Uh, I don't know because I, I boss know. from Snake Eater. All right, when he was wants, amazing. When he's not horny, he can write a good female character. character. But unfortunately, I think Kojima's got a little bit too much uh, pep in his step. His <laughs> point is, <laughs> point is, he writes some. Uh, I like that term, pep in his step. Yeah, that is a good one. So, I, I do and don't want to play it. It's a, it is a good game. I will tell you, it's a good game. I believe you. It's fun. Yes. Uh, it ends in such a way that you. No, 100% for sure, Konami fired Kojima right then. <laughs> That's where they fired him. Yep, yep. They're you like, can tell he stopped working right here. Yes, pretty much. All right, so there's that. Um, let's, you, you want me to talk about Grand Theft Auto Let's 5? talk about GTA Five. I hate GTA Five. I hate it so much. All right, here's, here's my relationship <laughs> with Grand Theft Auto games. I buy them. I play a little bit of them. I realize that I hate them. And then I stop playing. And then the next one comes out, and I repeat the same cycle. The only Grand Theft Auto I played really to the end was 4. And that's because of stupid Roman being like, Hey, Nico! And I was like, oh, that's so annoying. How can I, how can I not finish this game? Yeah. Um, Grand Theft Auto 5 is incredible, says the box. <laughs> it's, it's 10 out of 10, says reviewers everywhere. I hate it. I hate it so much. I figured you would, but I will say it is an outstanding game as a whole for Grand Theft Auto. So I, I'm going to say I'm going to say flat out, 
I'm sure it's a great game for people that enjoy the that game. Yes. I do not like the way Rockstar does Grand Theft Auto games. A, I don't like crime stories. They're just not enjoyable to me. Uh, I don't like them. They're it, it's like somebody who's like science fiction. That's ridiculous. And I'm just like true crime or crime. That okay. That, that's, that's also thing. ridiculous. It, ooh, somebody got carjacked. Oh no! <laughs> like oh, so. No. The stories are great. I like the characterization between each. Stephen Ogg really nails Trevor. Like, nails him. He is by far the most interesting one of the three. Michael is just whatever. Like, I, he's, got a, he's got a story. He's got the story that I think most Scorsese films have at some yeah. point. Yeah. Um, Franklin's great. Hmm. A, a lot of words I can't say. <laughs> but... but um, I mean, Franklin's just the... Franklin's the normal one. Yeah, he's the... And that's kind of why I like Franklin the most out of him, because yes, he's, he's just, just like CJ from San Andreas. He came in... I never played San Andreas. You know, oh my... Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, I guess that's going to be on your I, bad I, game. I shouldn't say that. I played like two hours of San Andreas. So the way San Andreas works is CJ left the hood uh-huh. to live somewhere else. Yeah. Then he came back. To bury his mom because she got caught up in a driveway. Yeah. And he's very normal and like, and then as the game goes on, he gets thrown into weirder and weirder situations. Yeah. Where that's, he, that's very similar to where he friend. ends up with all these crazy characters and he's like, uh, just trying to be the normal guy in the whole situation. I think that, that's a that's a lot of Grand Theft Autos though. I think they mm-hmm. they do that weird that like they slowly spiral out into really weird eccentric characters. Yeah, over fair time. enough. So that's why I like CJ. Um, I like Trevor because he's the epitome of the crazy character. Yeah, yes, he is. And that that part is a great dynamic. Like the doing the doing the three storyline thing is it is a very ambitious thing for a game to do. I think they they did, did it well. They, they did it well. Uh I haven't noticed anything crazy i'm about halfway through the game i really haven't progressed too much i figured once you told me where you were at i was like that's about halfway i was like i have a feeling andrew's gonna drop it right here i all right so here's the weirdest thing i think grand theft auto 5 is really clunky and i think it's because it's 11 years old but you know what game i love that has the same argument against it and it's made by the same people red dead redemption 2 i love that game and it is so clunky. And is that a game about crime? It is a game about crime. So where's your little argument? I don't like games about crime. Nye, 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 nye. I, you know what? You, you kind of got me on that one. <laughs> I know it is. I I liked Red Dead Redemption too. Uh, mainly, I, I mean, I like Red Dead Redemption one, but two I did enjoy, and I think it's because my enjoyment of westerns over. <laughs> It's my dislike of crime stories. Yeah. So, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Five is a good game. I can see why it makes a billion dollars every month on Grand Theft Auto Online, which is a terrible mode. I'd never want to touch that thing ever again. Oh, you tried it? Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> it's terrible. I'm actually surprised you bothered with that. Why? I figured you're just going to plow through the storyline and be done with it. Like, oh, done. I, I am plowing through the storyline. I will finish it eventually. Um... Like, I like the, like, other writers put it for, like, reviews and stuff is CJ is the mellow guy who gets thrown into a crazy situation and learns to adapt to it. Michael. You're talking about Franklin. Yeah, Franklin. Sorry, not CJ. Yes. That's Saturday it's right. entirely different. Yeah. Game. Uh, Franklin's the, the average guy. dude yeah. who gets thrown into awkward situations. Michael's the high-strung burnout dad who's trying to do the right thing but all he knows how to do it is through crime in the wrong he, way he was trying to do the right thing but all, all he, he knows is, is crime. crime yeah that, and then trevor is the epitome of most people who play the game <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's he's a characterization of how people play the game 90 percent of the time that that is right um i really hope you finish it i'm gonna try it seems to be really long it is long it is very long. How many heists are you? Two. What's, what was the last heist you did? Uh, Mer- Merriweather. The submarine? Uh, yeah. Oh, you're a little more than that. Okay. It just seems long because 
when you start getting into the side stuff, it takes a while. It's hard to figure out because you have to do side quests to get to the main quests because some you need. Yeah. Yeah. So it it does take a little bit. The map is pretty sizable, too. Like, yeah. Geez. And it's got a bunch of stuff you can interact with inside the smaller parts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rockstar loves to do that. Here you can do simulation stuff inside a video game. No, I'm talking about like there's shops you can go into and yeah. like almost every you shop can, you can go into. You can invest in the stock market. Like Yeah, you, it's, cra- it's, yeah, cra- it's crazy. It's crazy. It's all this stuff. Like, and I'm just like, I don't want to do any of this. <laughs> I just want to run people over with my car. <laughs> I hate the driving. So I can be done with this game. The driving is terrible. It has to do with that that 11-year-old physics engineer. It's just, yes. it's just not good. Sad thing is that physics engine and that graphics setting is better than what was uh, Cyberpunk 2022. Or 20. Yeah, you're right. Better than 2022. 20. Whatever. Whatever. What is it? 42? 27 to 7. 27 to 7. Yes. Because they, they did a side-by-side comparison of... Xbox One. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, and it was yeah. oh my, yes, like the water physics, the jumping. Oh, oh my it was gosh. like, I was like, why? This is a current gen game. What it's is so wrong with bad. it? So bad. Twenty seventy seven has so many problems that I can yeah. talk about. Although here's the crazy thing: I like twenty seventy seven. I know you more do. Than GTA Five. I don't <laughs> think twenty seventy seven is a great game, but I will probably buy the DLC when it comes out. Oh, I feel bad for you. Said they're working on. I didn't say full price. Okay, I didn't say Fair I was going to buy it. Uh, but yeah, Grand Theft Auto V. I will have more thoughts on it later. I'm going to spoil it. The, the thoughts are just, I hate this. <laughs> yeah. But I will I will probably finish it in the upcoming weeks. Okay, that's good. And Sonic, I will play Sonic. I will put the disc in. I will pray. I will play the I'm game. I'm telling you right now, I guarantee you Sonic is longer than GTA V. Are you kidding me? No, I am not. How many women does he kiss? Like <laughs> that game. Nope, it's just. Uh, how is it longer, Kyle? Because it's not only that one storyline. There's three other storylines that all encompass it. It's those are the main quests. The main yeah, there, there's no side quests. It's not open world. Oh, it's, I, it's okay. a pseudo open world. Oh, that's even worse. So you have to go through it as Sonic, then Shadow. Shadow's on with a gun. In the shadow game, yes. <laughs> okay, all right. And then you have to go as silver, and then they each have is, sub storylines. Silver, that... silver. Yes. Okay. All right. So I can't wait because I think it's going to break you. I think this. I don't, don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Nope. You're going to play it. Um. Yeah. I will reluctantly play that because. Uh, but yes, I'm getting an Xbox 360 specifically to play this game so I can come on here and be like, I actually now appreciate Grand Theft Auto V. I would be really surprised by that, but it would still make me laugh. So, wheel spin stuff, we're done. We're going to do the Fallout thing. Yeah, we're going to do the Fallout thing. If we complete it early, we'll go right back to the wheel. Because I don't think it'll take that long for us to complete that game. Uh, If you just do the main quest, it'll take a long No, I mean even with side quests, because I... Like, because um, depending on, like, alignment and stuff, there's going to be some side quests that you don't really see you because you're doing your kind of aligned thing. Nope, be aligned to one. <laughs> Finish. Kill everyone. <laughs> We're good. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, it's not that I want to do the wheel more. I still, I just felt like it would be a good no, thing. No, it's, it's a good thematic thing for the game. Yeah. I, I like that. Uh, plus, we're, we're still working on wheel games. Yeah, so <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Let us catch up on wheel games, too. We actually might, if we get all caught up on the wheel games, and we might... Throw wheel games in there still once or twice during the month. So, the things I wanted to talk about this week all incidentally pretty much come from Nintendo. What Nintendo? What do you, what do you possibly want to talk about? Something like Xenoblade Chronicles Three, mm-hmm. or wait, wait, the Monster Hunter stuff doesn't come from Nintendo. That comes from Capcom. Yes, but my, Nintendo said some stuff about it too. Um, so let's start off with Monster Hunter. Since that was the first one that came up before last week. So, with Monster Hunter, they went into more details about some of the stuff we're getting with the new Sunbreak patch. Um, oh my god, I'm so excited. They showed some more of the monsters we're getting. Uh, I don't know how many of them that you've played against before. Or Magala. 
Yeah, other the than one that. everyone loves for some, some reason. reason. Like, why? Because it's the emo, you know, goth dragon with the hood. It makes a hood out of its wings, so it looks cool. Right? I mean, yeah, it's a cool looking dragon. It, it's it's great, but that's just that's so, reason why. Yeah, Gormagala. I mean, the armor looks great for Gormagala. Yeah, I mean, come on, it looks it looks awesome. Who's it? it they, I don't think they've detailed what skills it has. It's on. most likely going to be. Uh, Great sword and stuff like that. Usually, oh, okay. usually bladed weapons. Okay, a, a lot of sharpness and stuff like that. Um, they showed Espinus or Espinus. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, is that the new new one? The one that's that the Frontier Dragon. Yeah, the one from Monster Hunter Frontier. Yes, that's really weird. They they brought like one other monster ever from Frontier. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So it just looks like a Tigrex with stripes and, and spikes. Yeah, and like a weird horn on it. No. Yeah, thorns. It shoots thorns. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, cool. And then <laughs> I was like, cool. Move on. No, I was really happy about that. That was one of the ones I was. I was like, sweet. We're getting some yeah. of the other games. Astalos is coming back. Yes, I hated that thing. I love that thing. I think I hated it. I I love it. Was so game. obnoxious. Well, the reason why is when I played four on the DS, uh-huh. all the really good starting hammer stuff was Astalos. No, was really susceptible to thunder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that thing would one shot me all the time. Yeah. Okay. Now the one that really made me bad is when they announced they're doing the white Nargakuga. Lucent Nargakuga in yes. its own arena. I know, and I hate it because it's that's how they introduced it in four or five for, for the DS because it was obnoxious. And I hate it. What does it do different? It turns invisible. Isn't the regular Nargakuga? Nope. Nar- regular Nargakuga just. Cut you and does a lot of critical. I'll cut you. Pretty much. I didn't. The, I did not know it turns invisible. Okay. It, it's white and it turns invisible, and you literally it doesn't even like. Where some games where they do when it turns invisible, you can see it moving around and stuff. Okay. Nope. So, so. It completely turns clear. You can't see it until it goes to attack and then its eyes. Well. You know when it when it gets enraged and the eyes yeah, start yeah, leaving yeah. that shadow. Yeah. That's the only time you can see it. Right before it attacks. That's it. I did really appreciate we're getting the hermit crabs back. Yes, I, I was excited. Love the hermit crabs, they're just the best. They they are fun. They're a fun. There's two of them they're bringing. Apparently there's like four hermit crabs, but there's two that they're bringing. They're bringing the they made the first two they ever had, though, yeah. which was the one with the dinosaur skull on yes. its butt. Yep. And then the other one with like a dragon skull on its butt. Yes, I believe. Yeah. And it shoots fire out of its butt, <laughs> which out is out of its butt. Okay. Funny. All right. So, those were two good ones. Uh, what else did I see that I'm super excited about? Um, I'm excited that we're getting a new map. Yes, the jungle. Yes, yeah, they, it's jungle from uh, Frontier. Yeah, yeah, it's they're it's, they're, it's they're, they're introducing a lot of other monsters. Uh, a new spider. We're getting the new the the what's the stupid spider called? The, the one that shoots silk. Ragna Kadachi. Yeah, the Ragna Kadachi. We're getting a new one. There's a new Ragna Kadachi. Yes, a variant. Oh. A variant. It uh. It's egg sacs explode now on oh, fire. Ooh, okay. Instead of binding you up, they explode. And it also it will shoot web yeah. and then shoot a, a baby spider down it. And then when it hits the ground, it explodes. It shot web. Yeah. That, that's an old meme. I'm sorry. Yes. It, it, there's, it, it's been years. So that was one. Um, we're getting a, another variant of the Mitsune. I did hear about that. Yeah. What's this one? I don't know. All right, it's just a Mitsune? Yeah. Okay. I just know it's a different kind. Um, okay. And there was is a couple... There, is there a T-Grex variant? There yes, there's going to be a T-Grex variant. there was a T-Grex um, We're also getting... I know they stopped doing Rampages, so there's not going to be any Rampages. Well, that's good. Like, Rampages are fun, but... They, they actually flat out said, we don't want to do that. <laughs> like, yeah, they were like doing, doing new, new Rampages. There's always so much to get in. Um, they yeah. introduced another one of the monsters that's... Which was, oh, I can't think of the stupid name. Which but it, was uh, what does it look like? It almost looks, looks like the, the thorned one that we were talking about, but it's a little different. Oh, then I will not be able to. I, can, I can't think of the name because it was big in the one for the last one for the DS, Freedom or Ultimate. It was big in Ultimate. It was one of the, okay. one of the next. Two. I, just, I just remember everyone was Gormagala all, all day, every day. That was four. Yeah, but I mean, when. When the showcase happened, everyone was like, 
Gormagala. 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 Which, I mean, I get Gormagala was not... I mean, half these things weren't World or Ice Golden, but... Oh, uh, one other thing they did say is they're not bringing forth... Um, uh, what's the water one that you always hated to fight? It started with a P. Like, Plasodorus or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. They're apparently just not going to bring that to Rise because it's... They're, there's some weird issue with it, it technically, that they just can't do it in Rise's engine. Good. I hate it. It's so stupid. they're not bringing any, it or any of its variants forward. It's the one that has the hitbox. It's like half the arena. But the problem is they brought the one in that's exactly like it already. Which one? Um, it's the one with the mud armor. Almadron. Yeah. Oh, Almadron's not like that. No, no, no. It's exactly. Oh, Barrow. You're thinking Barrow. The mud mm-hmm. armor's Barrow. No, 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 no. I swear to God that there is a monster that's exactly like the fish thing, except for it has mud on it. It does the exact same thing as the fish thing, except for it doesn't shoot water as much. It just... the, the only two mud ones are Almadron Hold and on a second. I, I, well, as we're going through that, I'll look it up, because I remember... I you rem- better. You better, Kyle. I remember hunting it, and I'm like, this is the stupid uh, Plesioth. And I was like... Plesioth. Yeah, that's Plesioth. right. Plesioth. So I was like, I hate this thing. Why, why do they have this in here? I, the Almadron, I thought that was, I didn't know if that was actually new or not. That's the one that builds, like, the little mud walls and stuff. Yes, I that, no, I'm not talking about that. Uh, I don't know of another one that does mud in that, in uh, Rise. I will look for it. Yeah, you better. You better, Kyle. Um, I'm kind of, have you looked at any of the new skills or the new weapons? Not fully, no. Okay. Oh, I did see Switch Axe is getting a counter that charges its files. That seems pretty ridiculous, especially with what you can do with switch axe right now. Just ha- having a lo- like a longsword style counter is uh, seems like it's gonna be ridiculous. Yeah, well, we'll see how this goes. Uh, I've been trying out switch axe a little bit. I still like hunting horn the best, but switch axe is pretty fun. Um, I am looking because I mean, as soon as master rank hits, it's gonna reset the whole whole board. Like your stuff's gonna be. Pointless at this point. I don't know how pointless it'll be. I think it'll be less good, but I think they'll. If it's if it's anything like the update they did in Iceborne, pretty much all your stuff just gets immediately outclassed. Uh, you can keep your super high level stuff from from regular hunter rank for maybe a couple, like one or two ranks into master. Uh, but after that, you you got to start crafting. Oh, no, I 100% believe I'm that. just going to lose out. Did you play the demo? No, I won't touch the demo. Why? What do you have against demos? I just never touch them. But you get items if you play. Yeah, well, whatever. God. How dare you? You're not a true Monster Hunter Rise fan. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> it's just my thing. I don't... You don't want you don't to play the demo? Yeah, because I don't want to... I like going into it kind of blind. Where is the stupid thing? I, I don't know. I don't know what you're looking for. No, I, I see it. But I'm, I'm excited. It's actually... Uh, it, it, it looks like this. With the flat head. It's got a flat head. It's got a flat head? Yeah, it's, uh, I just saw it. You're not talking about the Gyrodotus, are you? Maybe. I don't know. It, that is not the Plesio. They, they do have separate models. Like, that thing. That's what it looks like. And it's in there. That That is not in uh, Rise. I'm telling you. I, it's in one of the quests and the higher stuff that you haven't included yet, but I tell you it's there. I will go back and look. If I'm right, I'm right, and I'll post it on Facebook. What if you're wrong? Then you won't you hear will from publicly me. apologize. <laughs> is what will, what okay. will happen. You will publicly apologize, and you will give me a reroll in the Fallout. <laughs> uh. Uh, uh, so that is actually, what, one week from today? Yes. That, yeah, it's the thirtieth. I just got I just got charged for my pre order for it. So yeah, I'm going to Everybody's wait. Everybody's like, us. don't pre order it. Oh, come on, guys. Come on, sir. Yeah. What, what are they gonna do? Like, make release it as Tetris? Like, I would laugh. It's it's gonna be good. Everyone knows that. So their Monster Hunter team does a great job in general. Yeah. Um, I am curious to see what kind of end game they supply with Sunbreak because Rise didn't really have one, like, at all. As far as I was aware, or like maybe talisman chasing, but that really wasn't an end game. Well, there was, there was an end game, but it was just 
it know. was the fir- it was the first DLC when they did the combination of the dragon. The combination of the dragon. No, the, the oh, okay, the con- that was the storyline. Here it is. There it is. No, that's true, Dota. That's an entirely. Separate. It looks exactly the same. You showed me a picture of a giant shovel head monster, well, and then uh, you showed me a Jurodota. So sorry, they're... sorry. They all have the same model. All right, basics. All right. You're making this argument that that's a fish. Thus, by the transitive property of fish. <laughs> yes, fish? by the transitive property of fish. But it's exactly the same. It does all the exact same stuff as the Plessy Island. No, it does it. Yes, it does. No, it does it. Yeah, yes, except for instead of instead of doing the water laser where it shoots the stream like the Mitsune it shoots mud balls that's the only difference between the two it swims in the ground just like the Plesioth did it does the flops it's exactly the same don't give me that look it does I'm gonna give you that look it, you can give me that look it is not the look it yes it is it is exa- it plays exactly the same it does exactly the same stuff except for it shoots mud once in a while, instead of water I don't like this argument you cannot like it, but it's true. The Baryoth and the T-Rex are the same monster. Which one is the Baryoth? The, no, the, Cyber- the T-Rex is the Baryoth. The Baryoth is the T-Rex. Yes. With the T-Rex that has a shovel for a head. <laughs> I, I'm making the joke that a lot of the monsters are similar. Yes. Like, they're very similar. But they do have different moves, and they're not the same monsters. This one has all the same moves instead of having the water attribute as mud. All right, Kyle. Make me a video proving this. Okay. You, you, you told me you got some video editing skills. Yep, so. bet. Think I won't. <laughs> you know me well enough. I've done a lot of stupid stuff this, just to this, win a bet. This video is heavily doctored, Kyle. <laughs> no, but I'll just do a side-by-side comparison. Like, hey, this is this fight, and this is this fight. The difference. In this frame, you can see that the Jurodotus is using the same animation key it as does. the It does. Does. It does. It does. And here, you can see that it's the Jurodotus is yeah. actually a Plesia. <laughs> so, but yeah, when I watched the direct, uh, I watched a little bit with Cheetah. The Monster Hunter one? Yes. That was she... not a direct, Kyle. That was a Capcom showcase. Same difference. Just one. Yeah, you're right. They're identical. That's not my entire sense. Yes. Also, I'm somehow mind-bogglingly shocked you haven't talked about the one thing from that showcase that I thought you would talk about almost immediately. Do you know what I mean? Nope. The Re- Resident Evil Village. You can play as Lady D. No, I missed that. How of all people, how did I you miss that? that? Cuz the one we showed was just the all the added features. Like you missed all of the, the DLC for Resident Evil that they're coming out with? Yes, I did. Kyle. Oh. Okay. Kyle. Never mind. I see what you... Okay. Okay. You play Lady D and Mercenaries. Yes. Yeah, you okay. get to play as Lady D and Mercenaries. No, I thought you were talking about Monster Hunter. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. I was like, I did miss out on that. What no, am I doing? No. I want to play Lady D. No, I was... I was, it was the same showcase, though. They were, I I was specifically talking about the monster portion. That's why. That's why it threw me off. Like I said, you haven't brought up any of the Lady D Resident Evil stuff, which I, boggles my mind. I know, but I want to wait till we're closer, and then I'll talk about it all I want as we get closer. Oh, okay. I wanted to wait till it was closer. Okay. That's why I didn't specifically say anything about it okay. because Monster Hunter's close, Xenoblade's close. Late. Yeah, oh, to my heart. <laughs> to fun. my heart. The DLC actually looks interesting. Yes. Very interesting. It's a weird... You know what it reminds me of? A combina- it's Since they're doing it third person, too. Um, I feel like it's going to be a weird uh, pseudo version of Evil Within. Yeah, I can kind of see that. With the way they're pushing it, it feels like Evil Within. She's got all those powers. And, and it's all in her head. No, it's not in her head. It's in the mitochondria. Yes. Head. Well, same. Yeah. Which it technically, is not the same thing, okay? <laughs> which it's in her head because all the fungus things are connected, so it technically is in her head too. I need a side by side video comparison. <laughs> um, I saw that the Duke was in it as well. Yeah, he's like evil now. Maybe, potentially. Also, you saw you could play Resident Evil Village in third person. I did as as Ethan Winters, the whitest man alive. 
<laughs> the white, the whitest, most generic man alive, yes. which also freaks me out because now I wonder how that's going to play. Probably in the third person. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> but I, I meant like... Some of the cutscenes don't make any sense when you think about them in the third person. Just the cutscenes and some of the gameplay features are going to be really wonky and hard in third person. Unless they rework those sections for the third person camera. Which is true. Like I assume it's an option that you turn on before you start the game, maybe? I don't know, but I'm going to go play it through in third person. I was going to say, yeah, that's a good time for a playthrough again. Yeah, I want to try it. I want to do DLC first. Actually, no. It'd be like Resident Evil 4. Yeah. It's, it's just going to be like Resident Evil 4, which they're remaking next year. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. So, I'm like I'm excited about that, but I want to stay on Monster Hunter because that's... I, um, I thought you wanted to stay on Monster Hunter. Some of the new... Yeah. <laughs> oof. Oof. Kind of the table shift a little bit. There I yeah, it did. Uh, <laughs> I'm just... I'm just really, like... It's been a really good updates for games. There's a lot yeah, of stuff on the horizon. Been, it's been a lot of good news. It's been a lot of good stuff. Xenoblade Chronicles 3... That's looks, the next thing I was going to talk to you about. That looks like it's going to be a Xenoblade Chronicles game. <laughs> yes, it definitely is. I um, I was looking at it, and I'm just like, boy, I hope... I, I really hope they've learned a lot from 2. <laughs> like, I... Against, against my innate na- nature, I like 2. <laughs> Even though it's composed entirely of things that I hate. I liked 2. You loved... Two. Yes, I did. I did love to. And that blew my mind because... I wanted to kill every one of those little patapon things. And there's two more! Yay! In the main party! Yeah! And they're a dynamic duo! I want to find who's responsible for those and just write a strongly worded letter. Uh, a strongly worded, worded letter. letter. Complaint. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 coming out way sooner than I thought. It got pushed from like October to July. Like They're ready, yeah, they're ready to bring this thing out. And I am very interested to know anything about this, really. Because they've shown the party members. They've shown some of the combat system, like the Ouroboros. Or, ah, I can't even say that word. Ouroboros. What is it? Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Okay. I actually thought that was a really interesting mechanic. I mean, yeah. I think it's a good idea. One of my main complaints that they actually fixed in the Golden Country of Torna DLC was the main game's combat is super clunky and weird in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And, and in 1. And, and in, one. in 1, yeah. In Torna, they fixed so much of that. Like, mm-hmm. they made it way more streamlined. You played 1, right? Uh, a very long time ago, yes. And I played Xeno. You're talking about Xenoblade, right? Xenoblade you know, Chronicles 1. No. You're... Remember, Xenoblade Chronicles is the second series. Xenoblade is the first series. There was a Xenoblade Chronicles for the Wii U. That was the first Xenoblade Chronicles. Which is? Not the one with the Monado. That's the one with the mech suits. Where you flew around no, around that's Xenoblade suits. X. That's Xenoblade Chronicles X. The mech suits. Oh, was Xenoblade Chronicles X? I thought Xenoblade was the name of the one with the Monado. This is called Xenoblade. Nope. Is it Xenoblade Chronicles? Xenoblade Chronicles, the one with the Monado, is the first one. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is technically the second one. Yeah, but X came before. X came before that. X was weird. I didn't like it. I don't think yeah. anybody liked it. Because I'm looking at it right here. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I just got that. I thought Chronicles was the second So one. did you play the first one yes, with Monado? I did play the first one a long time ago. Yes. Uh, you can get the Monado in 3 with an Amiibo. Yes, it's a skin. Go go buy the Monado Amiibo. Get the Monado. <laughs> yeah, chill for Nintendo. <laughs> exactly. So Nintendo sent me a check. Um, I like how they did the combat system now. I I was really hoping they were going to change that after Torna showed that they could do a much better job than yes. what they did. Um, did you play Torna? No, I have not. Okay, Torna is actually really good. Uh, it's pretty sizable. And it's self-contained. It's actually independent of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You can buy it separately, but it's its own thing. Yeah, I know. They're like $70 for a copy. Wait, for Torna? Holy, you can buy a digital one for cheaper than that. Minus the entry. 
But uh, Golden Country of Torna was really good. Like, it distilled a lot of what Xenoblade Chronicles 2 did into a bite-sized, much, much cleaner piece. The only thing I really wish for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is that they don't have 7,000 side quests that are complete trash. Because They're that's, going to. Chronicles, that was the worst about Chronicles 3, was... You walk into a town, and there's, it's very clear that at some point they had either thought this game was an MMO or wanted the game to be an MMO. Because three billion of those annoying little patapons would be like, hey, I dropped my dumplings outside. Go kill five foxes to get my dumplings back, because I'm a moron. I'm like, no, patapon, I will not do this for you. I will not stoop down to help your kind. What is that? They're, they're expensive. Oh, yeah, but you can get a digital copy on the eShop. Uh, $25 for a complete save for Golden Country of Torna. That's a ripoff. It's a terrible ripoff. Who paid for a complete save? There's a lot of people who do that. That's terrible. But what I'm saying is... For a physical copy? It's expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sad thing is, when it came out, it was $20. Yeah, it was. And I should have bought it at $20. Yeah, should I made that mistake. Don't make the mistake again. Buy Xenoblade Chronicles 3 on release. Send me my check back. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to buy it on release. Are you? Uh, I I need to see like what my game load is, but I'll probably pick it up. Well, stop putting extra side games on there. This well, stop putting Grand Theft Auto Five on my play. You have it done. You're not much further. <laughs> you don't have much more to go. <laughs> stop putting Grand Theft Auto Five on. I don't want to hear like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas or anything in the future. I just don't want to hear it. Fair you're going to start saying it. I'm just going to scream into the mic. Fair enough. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick up Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I'm not sure exactly when I will, but I'm, I'm def- it's definitely on my radar. It's definitely something I want to Because I want to pick it up on release, but at the same time, I don't want to play it until you're playing it, because then... You can just you can just tell... Give me a pat... Like what, what, They're called patapons, aren't they? Something like that? Yes. Okay. Pon-pons. Pon-pons. That's it. You can give me a pon-pon score. Like, I had the first three hours of the game. You only get to see... No, pon-pons. I'm not doing that. I will not have... I will not open it until you open yours. Because uh, it gets obnoxious... Yeah, I'm holding you hostage because it got obnoxious with Resident Evil. I had to wait for you. Yeah, I and finished it. It took me like four months, but I did it. Yeah, it sucked. And then I was like, how? Why didn't you tell me to play this game sooner? And then it sucked because also then we did the reverse thing with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You got it before me and got way further ahead than I did. And I was yeah, like, I did. I was uh, like, these Padabons suck. Yeah. <laughs> I hate them. So... This is one of those games I feel like me and you have to play well, we'll simultaneously. Just, I'll be like, all right, Kyle, I did another five minutes. Okay, you're good? You're good? You, did you do that quest? Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, Not I'll, quite. I'll, I'll walk forward now. Kyle, Kyle, slow down. <laughs> Not quite that bad. <laughs> but, you know, so we can at least... Stay roughly in the same. I see what yeah, you're saying. Because yeah. it gets kind of noxious when you when's complete... That, when's that come out? Sometime? July 30th. July 3rd, end of July. Yeah, I timed this all out perfectly. <laughs> um, the other game I saw during, I believe it was the Xbox show or something recently, was Redfall or whatever. The Redfall, yeah, Arcane Studios next work. So I'm a huge fan of Arcane Studios. I love the Dishonored series. Uh, I haven't played Deathloop yet because I'm waiting for it to be a non-Sony exclusive. Um, and I have Game Pass, so it's just going to show up. Bethesda owns Arcane Studios. Arcane Studios are super creative. They do really good work. They did the re- reboot of Prey, which had absolutely nothing to do with the original Prey, but it was still a great game. Um, I think Redfall looks like it's going to be their first problem game. Uh, really? Yes, for one reason. Not the aesthetic. I actually love the aesthetic. Vampire New England, like that's great. Um, the gameplay that they showed is too slow. Okay, it's just too slow. Uh, Deathloop is a pretty fast-paced shooter, like it's pretty quick. The stuff they showed for Redfall, and I'm hoping that it was just because it was presentation gameplay footage, but it felt slow. It felt kind of clunky. It needed to have some well, sped up animations. It needed to. Did you like Borderlands? No. Okay, then you probably won't like this. So, because it's more or less Borderlands. So yes and no. It's it's four player co op. 
It is actually an open world, but you do missions in the world with drop in, drop out and stuff. It's yeah. weird. It's a really weird setup. Yeah, we'll see how. And you get you do get loot like Borderlands. It does drop like that. I am hoping it's good because I really like Arcane Studios and I want to see them succeed. I have concerns about the actual gunplay. Uh, and if you're comparing it to Borderlands in terms of gunplay, I don't appreciate it. <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm just I, saying. I don't like the Borderlands gunplay. I think it's really Because each each character has their own specific set of skills and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, the ghost, the ghost phone booth or whatever it is. Yeah. That is cool. So, like it right. looks so creative. Let's I, move on to the segment that you wanted to talk about, which was oh, the so, Pride segment. Yeah, yeah. I, I figure it's it's Pride Month. It's the last show in the month um, of Pride. And I figured we should we should... We should spare a moment to talk about where games get queer representation correct and where they get it wrong. And for those of you listening who are, are unaware, queer has been taken back for many years, so don't worry about that. that <laughs> that's fine. Um, games screw this up so often. Mm-hmm. So, so, so often. Uh, and it's not even just a matter of representation or anything like that. It's there is a twofold thing. One is, does your game have it? What does your game have in it? And how does your game treat the subject? Those are three entirely separate things. There are games that absolutely nail it and are so popular, and people are just like, okay, this is perfect. The representation here is great. This game is fantastic. There's nothing wrong. And then you have games like, and I'm, I'm going to go on the record here to say that I find this absolutely absurd. In the Microsoft Store, they have a Pride game section. And that's great. That's wonderful. I'm glad they're putting that out there for all the Call of Duty gamers to be like, what's a gay person? Um, But in that section, they have the latest Battlefield game. Now, that's weird for a variety of reasons. The latest Battlefield game does not have a campaign. It doesn't even have a storyline that is any more than it's the future, go and kill people. I am really trying to figure out what part of the game is related to pride and the queer identity. Is it, what is it? (laughs) Like, seriously, what is it? Yeah, so you told me that. I'm like, really? Yeah, it's really odd. I don't understand why it's there. And at what point in the game you could have a nuanced representation or even a good representation. I don't. I think it might have to do with the specialists in the game, but even then, no one cares about them. They're just skins. Right? So, that seems to me like it's fine. Like, I do not have an issue with them saying this specialist is gay. Blah, 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 blah. That's okay. But trying to put that out there as a poster child of a pride themed month seems disingenuous when you have such good games doing work like Hades. Hades is an absolutely stellar game for queer representation. Uh, if you have, are you familiar with Hades? Yes, I'm familiar with Hades, okay. and I, I I know what you mean. Yes, Super Giant Games has always been great, like absolutely amazing for the LGBTQIA plus community. That does get longer, but it's got to be inclusive. Yes. So Super Giant's done so well. Higher was amazing. Transistor was amazing. Mm-hmm. And they all told great nuanced stories where this, at no point were, was this clearly a, a sales tactic. Was this a thing? It was, and I'm not saying that the appearance of, of queer representation in games is a sales tactic. It, it should just be as common as it is in real life. It, it does not matter, really. But it, it does, does matter. It, it, it matters into, like, if somebody walked up to me, Mm. And it's like, buy this game. There's a colored guy in it. That means you'll like it because there's colored guys in it. That's that's not showing any respect to my culture, your culture, anyone's culture, when you do right. it like that. Because it's, it's only a way to turn you into money. Correct. It, it and is that's, it's pandering. And I hate, I hate pandering. So the, the big issue in, in gaming is that a lot of the times, no matter how... The, pers- the, the the queer representation shows up in the game, you'll be accused of pandering, no matter what. 
because there is a significant segment of the video gaming public that just does not want anyone queer in their game. Which is stupid. It's incredible. I don't... Well, well, welcome, welcome to reality. <laughs> yeah. And like I've told you before, my biggest thing is story base. Mm. As long as it does well or fits well in the story, I don't care. Well, I'm, I'm going to argue that in a story based game, it doesn't even necessarily need to fit well because it doesn't really like if there's just an aside or something. It th- those people exist. Those yes. people do exist. But what what I'm saying is, if they're going to go over the make sure they call attention to it make it a good part of like make it fit into the story make it not awkward so th- there's a reasonable question in there of what what's awkward because if you go into a story based game and let's say you meet an npc and the npc is like i'm getting married to my girlfriend you're like okay cool you don't actually spend any time to process it yeah. but if the npc is also female and says, I'm going to get married to my girlfriend, you're going to see about 20 different posts online about that. Yeah, I know. It's stupid. That, those queer people exist. It is okay to have them as background information because yes. they do exist. Yes. Well, and they're a lot more common than most people assume. Yes. So, like, and we were talking about bad ways of doing it. One of Very the, bad ways. One of the it. worst ways I've ever seen mm-hmm. was through Blizzard and through Overwatch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna st- say right there. A, I, I agree generally with Overwatch because Overwatch has done a lot of, we're going to be inclusive, and then they usually do a very tone deaf version of that inclusion. Yeah. Because they don't ever bother to talk to anyone that's in that community that they want to yeah. include. Because they, they did it twice. They've had two confirmed. As far as I, last time I checked in, they had two confirmed LBGTQ plus characters. And Soldier seventy six. The first one they announced was Tracer. Tracer. Yeah. Okay. Which kind of threw me off because they were like, who is it going to be? Like, the, the, the ads I are. I remember that. They, they kind of yeah. turned it into this big, like, like reveal. Who's it going to be? Can you take your guesses? Is it going to be this guy? Is it going to be this guy? They, like, they it was really. They really. They, they were holding it over your head like it was some. They baited it. Yeah, they, they baited they, it they, super they, hard. And then, you know, they're like, then, like, all these votes, they literally allowed you to vote on it and see who you think it is. Did it come out like a Christmas comic? Yeah, something? it came out a Christmas comic where Tracer is with a woman, which is whatever. I don't care about that. But it was just really weird because it was like... It felt it felt like an advertising tactic. It yeah, felt, exactly. It felt, it felt disingenuous. It was very disingenuous. It didn't and feel then, like they were doing it because they believed that that was the evolution of the character they they it felt like they were doing that so that they could advertise that they are inclusive yes and then they did it with soldier 76 through a, Wasn't that a comic too? yeah like a weird web comic yeah, and they, it was just like they had no guts they wouldn't, was, they wouldn't announce it anyway they they were doing it as they were going through like a pseudo backstory which i like soldier 76 as a character yeah. he was the soldier that was always doing the right thing and then it all blew up in his face being the soldier and then he knew nothing else, so he went right back to being a soldier after his whole life fell apart. I bet it blew up in his face. And then they're like, he was going with the one character, Anna, who is one of the main characters, like, mother. Who, Farrah's mom. Farrah's mom, who's yeah. a sniper, and they were talking about their past. And then all of a sudden, she's, like, flicking through some pictures, and he goes, so there's Soldier 76, you know, with some guy, whatever. She okay, goes, they were just roommates, Kyle. Yeah, they, right. They were, they were just roommates. Just, no, but it was like, remember what? So and so did to him, and remember your tragic backstory with your husband. And he goes, "Yeah, I remember." And it's gonna like dark and like really. Like I, I don't. I don't think that that's how it went. But Go read it. Go read it. It I, is that bad. I actually prefer. It's it. really rough. It's really like I read through it. And I'm like, this is bad. This is. It was cliche dark story set up on top of like. Here's the big reveal. He had a husband. I'm like, but I know who we're cares? I know we're getting out of time, but I, I do want to end and say that there are plenty of games doing representation right and and for our community. Yes. And those The Last of Us was a good one. The Last of Us was a good one. And uh Hades, Paradise Killer, uh, there are probably other games that I'm thinking of. They do such a good job of of making that a part of the gaming landscape where so many people have resisted it in the past. Yes. So with that note, we're going to call it a good night. Uh, We will see you again in two weeks, and we will hear from us earlier for Fallout. Have a good night. Bye.